guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna review the cranberry lime with a little bit of beet lager that I made for Thanksgiving, even though it is after Thanksgiving. It's still Thanksgiving weekend-ish for us. It's still holiday season. It's holiday season. So, that, yeah, that's it. Well, that's what we're gonna do. That's, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. How do you feel about that? Feel good about it. So we, um, we actually got to get like an early, early exposure to this when we were doing that last beer because you let me try it from the fermenter. Oh yeah. Right? And it was one of those things where you were like, oh, it's not gonna be ready, it's not gonna be ready. It and then at room out temperature, fermenter. out of the fermenter, it was already like this brilliant magenta color. And even at room temperature, it was already tasty. So I'm like, yeah, it was really good. Um, really looking forward to so it. this one turned out to be 5.9%. Um, yeah, it's a little high for a lager, is it? Yeah, but I'm brewing a fest beer right now that that's like the recommended range, so... Same world. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's like we added fruit to it, I was it, gonna so say, do you, did the, did the sugar from the fruit... Yeah, it adds. Increase the alcohol The content. beets and the uh, cranberries. I don't really think of beets as They're a sugary fruit, but yeah, sugary. they absolutely do. Beet sugar is a thing. Science. I know. Let's drink it. But yeah. Okay. So. Look at that color. I feel like you're gonna have like a rainbow. I'm gonna pour this a lot because we're gonna want a lot. Of it's course, it's like super um, foamy. Between this, a fest beer, like some of your IPAs and sours, it's like a from red to like light yellow, and then you should do a green one for St. Patrick's Day, and it'll be the whole like do the rainbow. Ooh, I could. Gives taste the rainbow a whole new meaning. I'll give you more because you, you got the. Because you know I'm gonna want it. Foam stick. <laughs> foam stick? Short end of the foam stick. Foam stick, dip tubes, whole anatomy lesson here. There you go. Okay. So, okay. I watched the brewing one when you actually, I wasn't with you when you brewed this one. No. So, there were some interesting things in there because I've never seen you add something for color before. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever added for solely color. It worked because we've talked about doing the whatever pea blossom thing. And I, oh, I what? guess we did do that, but it didn't work. Really? I, I mean, I don't remember. I added a bunch of hibiscus to that beer as well, and I just mm. said you gotta add a ton. So it didn't quite work. Well, this certainly did. That's yeah. so pretty. The beads are really key. Other people have suggested using um, like grape skins, like red grape skins. Yeah, but that's gonna impart tannins and a more, of a, a more of an acidic nature. Well, smell this and you'll see what ha the beet did. <laughs> Only my, you were worried about that. I feel like it's really it's mild. It's got an earthy smell. I don't mind that. Some people don't like beet juice. I am one of those people. But if you didn't, if you didn't tell me that that's what that was, I would have just said it's kind of earthy. It's a little yeah. dirty. I wouldn't have said beet. Yeah. I mean, okay. I used to work at a juice shop. I I know the the smell of beets. They're like burned into my brain. Yeah. Um. So the head is obviously pink. Cool. <laughs> it's not super clear. Uh. I think the cranberries gave it a little bit of a haze. Mm -hmm. There's um, pectin in cranberries, so if you heat them at all, they will give you a little haze. Um, I didn't heat them, but I did throw them in at 100 degrees. That could have done something. Is pectin, why does that word make me think of gelatin? Because that's what it is. is it? it is. Yeah, that's why you can just boil cranberries and make the sauce out of them. I really like how that feels. Because like, lagers inherently are like summery and light and bright, and it still has that really crisp, light body to it, mm -hmm. but the, Cranberries it's, aren't sweet, so it's kind of got that tart. It's crisp and watery, but but the cranberries ground it. Yeah, it's they, it's definitely dry too. It's, it's not dry, but spray. it's got a tartness to it. The difference between canned cranberry sauce and like the homemade cranberry sauce yeah. is so distinct. Where I was worried it was going to be like the canned cranberry and have like that's why I use fresh cranberries because I'm like oh, very paranoid about. I think it made a huge difference. Damn, bottle that shit. So the nose, like once you get into it, you can smell the cranberries, but you have to get past the beet. So again, I think they very- I get the lime as well in the nose. This one's interesting to me because if you hadn't, if you blindfolded me, I, I've done pretty well when we've done that, when you asked like just blind. This one might have stumped me because I would have, the, the earthiness I wouldn't have placed. Nothing's like super descript. It marries about really it. well. Yeah. 
because I would have gotten something bright and citrusy, you know, but I wouldn't have placed lime until you said it. Yeah, and the longer you let it sit, I feel like the more lagery it's becoming. So like this has been sitting for about a week in the keg or so, and um, it's it's gotten a lot lighter. I think uh, just by the nature of the yeast falling out of it, I mm. think the body has gotten a lot lighter, and it's it's gotten a, it's honestly gotten better. <laughs> do, you, do you are you experiencing like one taste on your palate when you drink in and then another kind of when you exhale that the cranberry for me is coming in much more on my exhale. I feel like when this warms up a little I bit, it's gonna the, open up too. Yeah, it is, because it's cold as shit. It's now. really cold, which uh, for summer, you want that in a really light well, it's a lager, so. But as it's like going into my palate, I feel it. Remember that, what yeah. we drank the other day, that coffee weirdness. Yeah. That, you know, it's almost like champagne in the first sip. It's I, the dryness. I get it's that dry, light, bubbly. It's not sweet like effervescent. It's very effervescent. There is a little bit of that. I, car I carbonated it a lot. Um, I usually don't. Like I, it this I like a really carbonated lager. And you know, I don't usually like the super carbonated, but it works with this. Yeah, it's a little it soda-y. It's a little like it is. Well, it's I was refreshing. going. I was going for champagne-y. It worked. This would be dangerous though because you said it's five point two, but it doesn't five point nine. It doesn't drink like that. It, it drinks, drinks like, like soda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this would quench my thirst with a meal. If I had had this with Thanksgiving, because like beer for me, I've talked about this multiple times. I can't drink a lot. It just fills me yeah. up. This is a lot of food too. Burger and beer. I get half a beer. That's it. This yeah, would have no quenched same. my thirst during a big meal. Like yeah, it's it's not like one of those heavy beers that you can only mm -hmm. drink half. I mean, like I'm the kind of person who can, I can drink lagers all day. And the minute you put an IPA in front of me, I can have like a half of one, and I'm like, I need to go to bed now. Bye. <laughs> and I'm the person that milks a beer because I'll like take a shot and then hold on to a, like a lager or a pilsner or something all like for the rest of the night. Because if I do an IPA, I just won't finish it. You're right. Yeah. Belgians, I have a hard time finishing too, unless it's like a quad. For some reason, I. <sighs> Man, I can count on those. It's not good. It's dangerous, but, girl. The, the sad part about me is my favorite beers are like Pilsners, lagers on the very light end, and I want to drink them all day. But I feel the same way about, yeah, Le Fin du Monde. I can drink a bottle of that in like five seconds flat. And like, that's a skill. I can't, actually. I would die. And you can, you just won't be there tomorrow or anything. <laughs> You'll be in bed. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, on the other spectrum, like, triple IPAs are like my one of my favorite styles. Like, that's what I always go for if I'm going to a restaurant or something. But the thing is, I like them so much, I drink them way too fast, and then I'm like a mess. Yeah, so I always <laughs> tend to drink the first half of those beers really fast, and then I like the second half a lot. And then the other beer, nitro beers, I drink super fast, which makes sense. That I oh, like, interesting. I, I like less carbonate. Like the way it feels for me is it doesn't fill me up the same way. Yeah, that's why I got it so into that golden stout. I know. I think I like extra carbonated because I'm like a sparkling water fanatic, and I am not. Yeah. Ah, look at you get to know us, guys. There'll yeah. be trivia at the end. There won't. There will. What's Maybe my favorite? Actually. What's my favorite uh, brand of sparkling water? Because I have brand favorites, not just flavor. That favorites. would be kind of fun. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Next giveaway that you do, <laughs> you should start dropping Easter eggs of knowledge, and then at the end of whatever the video it is that you do a giveaway, it'll be a trivia question about <laughs> one of those. Right? That'd be funny. First of all, thank you increases viewership, but also rewards people that already saw the videos. First of all, it's Safeway Saleo brand black cherry. Not that's La Crocs. La Cro no, you know I'm not a huge fan of La Crocs. I grew up with. Um, the like cheap ass clear badly flavored stuff. Most of them are clear. No, no, no. But like the ones that were in the clear bottle, the clear plastic. Oh like, yeah. That are probably all chemicals. Um, the ones that are sweetened with like aspartame. Literally, like. Oh, so gross. But because they were like. I got one of those the other day. Oh, so I got a. Tell me, black cherry. No, it it's was like medicine. It was like peach cream. No, oh, peach cream is bad. Peach tangerine was my favorite. Oh god, I don't know why I got it. I didn't think it was. It, it had the fake sweetener, and I was just oh, like, it tastes like. I was. Sweetener. I was literally buying like six cases, and then I saw a little bottle. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that flavor. Um, the sparkling terrible. coconut waters are really good. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And then I've also discovered like soda. You drink the bubbles as a drink to refresh you. I don't like that. But I have learned, same with champagne, aggressive bubbles I don't like. The Armenian water Arat. 
Oh yeah, you my said favorite. it so much better. It's delicate little magic bubbles that dance on your tongue to which you go just make you burp. Interesting. And Marcus goes through like cases of it. This is super relevant. It's very relevant. What if you brewed a beer with carbonated water? What would that do? Nothing? It, it the carbonation would just leave. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that what would be curious is if you used, I'll jump back into like actually talking about this because we cool. haven't done that for long. No. Uh, <laughs> we got distracted quicker. <laughs> this was just an easy one. I know. We just like it too much. And yeah. it's pretty simple. Um, I think what I would be curious about is how much of the beet really is imparting flavors that we just keep saying are, they're all married. So like, yeah. if you did it with... I think the next time I want to do it, I want to do like half the amount of beet and see if it gets rid of the like beet aroma. I also want to, like if you just didn't do any beet, it would obviously be much lighter in color. Yeah. Right? But I'd be curious about, I mean, you're not going to do a whole batch like that. This is more I just- could. I I mean. This is more would, just pure curiosity. It would of, probably be a very light pink because of the cranberry skins. I'd just be curious to see how much of the beet is actually on our palette that we're not identifying. Like, would the cranberries come out a lot more? That would be good. Is a cranberry cherry version? There, there's gotta be some fruits that are not palatable for like doing fermenting with beer. That just like bananas, you wouldn't want to throw in. Peaches. People make banana bread beer with fresh bananas. I don't like know. Like with the skins. I don't know. Cause like I think about no, but it tastes like legit banana bread. It's I think it's Murphy's. I think I'll pass on that. Murphy's banana bread beer. I I used to drink it in college as like a joke. That sounds about right. No, I mean I think I mean it was my uh my framboise days. <laughs> yeah. Do they use fresh fruit? I think so. Probably they're like super fancy. It's I'm I just don't know the the science of that of like what like something about hard yeah you guys hard know cranberries this. feels like you could what about like a grape beer like if you a grape beer not like fanta grape like fresh grapes okay so is that like barley wine um no that's barley i okay so i was doing a some research about um ancient home brewing or ancient brewing i guess it was all home brewing um <laughs> <laughs> um but uh like there's a ton of beers that were made with grapes in ancient times. And um, I think, of course I'm gonna screw this up now, but um, one of the oldest, uh, one of the oldest like vessels was found to have, I think, I, I might be wrong guys, but grapes, rice, and it was just found in China. Yes. And, it, and this was like 7,000 BC, I think. Wasn't China one of the first yeah. purveyors of alcohol? Because they just, again, by accident, the same way probably most of this happened, but the rice yeah. fermented. Yeah, it was like China and uh, like Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. It was Mesopotamia. Um, so Mesopotamia, they're they're like they're in, like they're surmising that it's ten thousand BCE, but they don't have solid evidence. That's just more of like an, an extrapolation an yeah. of like different evidence. But in China, they actually have vessels that are that old. Well, and, and because of the way that all these things happened, whether it was barley or rice or grapes, it was what they had accessible. Yeah. So the interesting question you is... You just ferment whatever you have. So where's the line between beer and wine? I was trying I was trying to Google this. I was trying to Google this all freaking day. I could not find it. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an, a, a hypothesis. Okay. Wine is grapes and grapes alone. You can, they, people do add sugar sometimes, Yeah. but there's nothing else other than wine. I can wine. see that. But I'm also wondering if it's something to do with the fact that um, beer is typically cooked and then fermented versus Wine's wine never is, cooked. is never cooked. I think that's probably part of it, but I also think that if you add a grain to wine, it, it immediately is no Turns it wine. into beer. It, it's just something else. Maybe, well, maybe there's another name for whatever yeah. they were creating in that time. But yeah, I mean, if beer was the creation of I love, the basic I love that I was literally researching this all day. I spent three hours researching this stuff. Yeah, I think the definition of wine is much simpler. I think, I think so too. Because wine, you're right, it's uncooked. Did you know Greeks and Romans didn't like beer? They called it... <laughs> some, one of them said, wine smells like nectar where beer smells like a goat. And I thought I that beer was back then also did smell like hilarious. Goat. I'm sure it did. I mean, we call beer goatee now. 
Yeah, we call it a cheese goatee when it's goat cheese. I love goat cheese. So if you guys know the reason ancient beers that include grapes or other fruits uh, are considered beers versus wines, let me know. I'm really interested in this. And if you have any like documentation, I'm, I'd be happy to read it. I'm doing a ton of research on the history of beer right now and I'm super into it. Because my guess is, while fruited beers only recently in the last what couple decades got any sort of notoriety, it was probably super normal back in the day because it was absolutely like throw whatever we can that will create alcohol into whatever bucket. Yeah. So I mean, I thought it was I, whatever you had left over. The I'm original. curious about the, the or is this where sours came from? Because they fermented, over fermented, and turned sour. Well, sour can just come from open fermentation. So, like, back typically fruited beer probably may have turned into that. Then typically, ancient beer would always be more sour than it would be now. Mm. Second question that you may know the answer to: We obviously know there's a Greek and Roman god of wine. Is there a Greek or Roman god of beer? I don't know about Greek or Roman, but um, there are, okay, so <laughs> um, the Egyptian god of death, Osiris, Osiris, is also the god of beer. There is a goddess named Kasi, who is the goddess of beer in Sumerian culture. There's also um, a goddess that I'm going to forget the name of in e Egypt, who basically was like this like terrible force, and then... They like got her drunk and she woke up as like a good deity. It's, uh, it think starts about with an H. But a horse is a man. It, well, think, think about where these areas are though. If you think about ancient food in that era, bread was absolutely one of them. Where they yeah. were like back in biblical days in, in the Mesopotamian era, like part of a whole Jewish holiday is about bread that didn't rise. So that ingredient was very prevalent. In Greece, you don't, like now we think of bread, but do you think about like old like pita and falafel? Yeah. I mean, obviously we're talking I, older they, than that. I think they were just like maybe they their culture have... just likes wine better. Also, they just may not have been able to grow grain the same way they did. But if you think about the Roman Empire, they took over everything. Fair. <laughs> that is true. That is true. They literally took over it all. I remember being obsessed. With Greek mythology. Ooh, and did you know that they opened up a tomb from ancient Egypt that's never been opened before during 2020? Yes, I do know that. Yeah, Why? Mummy curse. And that tonight yeah. is a beaver moon. Beaver moon? Yes, yeah, so there's a lunar eclipse. There's like an official, it's like a poly mind something or other where, like, you know, total. So it's the last lunar eclipse of the year, and uh, like a total lunar eclipse is, you know, total lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, this is by the angle. It is a full moon tonight, but it's gonna be harder to see without a telescope because only it's gonna be like partially shaded in the middle or something. But Interesting. They call it a beaver moon. Interesting. So if you guys have a weird night tonight, <laughs> not to this time. If Jenny you... talks about the moon, <laughs> when this comes out. I want you to think back on what you were doing on November 30th. And it was a weird day for you. This is gonna come out on like Thursday. You'll be able to answer then. Yeah. You or you can cut that out because it was weird. No, I love it. <laughs> Didn't we do we we talked about the whole blue moon thing too? You've been talking about the moon for many episodes. <laughs> 2020! <laughs> Looks like two giant full moons! We're gonna call this one a success. If you make it, maybe cut down on the beat. Yeah, if you like beets, keep it. If you make it's good it with, with no it. beets, tell us what it tasted like just so that we don't have to do it. Yeah, you can send me a photo on Instagram, flora underscore brewing. You know what we're probably gonna do tonight though? Drink half the keg. Drink half, half the keg. We already did drink half the keg. <laughs> you know what we already did this week? <laughs> drink, drink half, half the keg. keg. No, we didn't because we had never tasted it before today. I forgot. I did. Shh, I didn't. This was my Thanksgiving beer. I had to drink it. I have had a request if I can bring a little bit downstairs. They want to try it. I have a whole friggin' growler in the thing for you. Can you spare that? Yes. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. If you want to get my videos early, ad free, I've got merch, bonus content, and other things. Maybe trivia someday. Ooh, maybe trivia. Beer trivia. I do love trivia. We should host a beer trivia night. That would be fun. That would be really fun. Maybe the next happy hour. Great. Okay. Oh, we have happy hour. We'll have happy hour. Anyway, support your favorite brewer. Love. Thank you. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Wait. It's my pretty. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. So today we are brewing the cranberry lime lager. That I'm not mistaken, you probably already brewed it. I think we're tasting it. God damn, I did that on the. <laughs> I did that on the Instagram post. I sent them as a review when it was a brew. The fastest <laughs> brew so ever. Eight hours later. <laughs> It could just be time lapse with COVID. You know what? 2020 time already time doesn't, doesn't mean anything. So like this totally tracks. Okay. Okay. Go. Okay. <laughs> Whoops, Sarah. What's funny? <laughs> Do I have something in my teeth? This has just been who I am now. You mean just drink the beer first and then do it? Isn't that what they all want us to do oh anyway? Oh my God, right? Yeah. Start pounding the whiskey and bacon. Good for that. <laughs> 